And we're back! Hello, hey, the anchor. Look at that, it's still there. Yeah, the anchor is there. It's always there. By the way, <sighs> uh, we have Morgan joining us for Echo now. Yeah! Hello! Well, at least for today. Just yeah, for just this today. one. Just for this one recording. <laughs> All right. So I gotta be on my A game because this is gonna be annoying real quick off the bat. There was a very singular echo in this ravine. The rattling of wagons resembled carpenters hammering at the board inside the highest rocks. The report of a rifle resembled the sharp crack of thunder and echoes from rock to rock for some time. The lowing of cattle and braying of mules seemed to be answered beyond the mountains. Music most notably had a very queer effect and resembled a person standing inside the rock, imitating every note. William Clayton, Mormon Trail Pioneer. There we go. Last time I didn't get all of it. <laughs> so, uh, just as a quick rehash, Morgan, how much of uh, Echo do you know? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, not a lot. I know that Chase and Leo were a thing, and now they're not. Thank God. <laughs> okay, well, that, that game takes place in 2015. This yes. is a prequel set in 2008. Ooh. So this is before Chase and Leo ended up being romantically together and all that. But, uh, oh, somebody just joined. That would be a Sam. Oh, okay. Hey, Sam, we're playing uh, Route 65. So. Yeah. All right. And just so you know, we're recording, okay? Uh, but yeah, so Morgan, just to give you a brief update about it. Uh, so this is basically seven years prior and this is also uh, a horrifying thing that Sam and I have realized, uh, and by that I mean uh, female Sam, and that was us realizing that, holy crap, a lot of the characters were literally our age because Chase and Carl are born in the year 1993, but they were wow. in, they were in the grade below us for some reason, while uh, Jenna is in our grade. Like, she graduates in the class of 2011. Gotcha. So, remember that when you see all these references and for <laughs> why uh, Sam and I might cringe a little bit more about certain things. <laughs> so, time for me to start up my uh, high school voice again. No, God, I can't deal with this right now. I stare at the screen, letting my phone vibrate until it stops. I'll try to make an excuse that I was on silent later. I have been a cringing, flustered mess since this morning. School and my geometry test had kept me only slightly distracted. With the call as a reminder, I feel a welling sensation around my eyes and my vision blurs. I suck in my cheeks before exuding a shaky exhale. Nothing will ever be the same anymore. My parents won't see me as normal anymore. All because I was daft enough to try and one out on the computer before the bus came this morning. I thought they were at work. Mom is usually out by five and dad by six, but they took the day off on account of it's their anniversary. So not only did they catch me with my pants down, freaking paw, but also found out I was gay in one fell swoop of head induced lack of spatial awareness. I heard mom scream. I was so startled I jumped, my headphones coming unplugged from my laptop, blasting Fox Stallion on full blast. Woof. Just when my dad came running in. I remember mom turned, went to her room, locked the door, and I didn't see her again before I left. Dad, meanwhile, was sort of laughing nervously before I took off to my bus stop, but I could tell from his face that this was beyond awkward for him. I couldn't bring myself to words. I just pulled up my shorts and ran to my bus stop. All throughout the day, the thought of coming home and having to face the shame was like being dunked in ice water. Each mile we travel closer to Echo increases that feeling of inevitable awfulness. I try to go over excuses in my head. I could maybe attempt to convince them that I was straight Both the guys in the video have pretty visible beard scruff, though. I rub my eyes. The thought of trying to figure out what all my folks saw on the screen makes me want to retch. Well, I could say it was a virus that took control of my browser window, and that it was so startling a prospect that I didn't have time to fully put on my shorts. And they were- it was unrelated. Fuck. I peek through my paws at my phone screen, the symbol for a missed voicemail having appeared up top. 
I gripped my teeth in extreme apprehension, turning the screen off and shoving my phone back into my pocket. Taking a moment to recombobulate, I look around. The bus is pretty empty beside me. Besides me, the bus driver, who has been trying to get the radio to work the whole ride, and Carl in the seat adjacent to me. Carl, as usual, has his earbuds in with his expensive handheld out, playing some Japanese tactics RPG. Usually we have at least Jeremy, Clint, Heather, Jasmine, and TJ with us, but not today. Not many kids who go to school in Peyton live out in Echo. I'm pretty astonished the bus district expansion covered our town. The bus ride from Peyton to Echo usually takes about 45 minutes, though it feels much longer. Especially now. Yeah. The ram looks up from his game to the source of the music, slightly furrow-browed. Our bus driver grins back at him, though, uh, through the rear view, or the rear mirror in a self-satisfied fashion, her gummy Cheshire maw on full yet brief display. Realizing she's looking back at him, Carl grunts, hunching up his shoulders a bit. Aaron, why? She lets out a brief chortle. Uh, Sam, you want to be Karen for now since we don't have Hannah? Sure. Sure. Well, seeing as I only have you two along with me today, I thought I'd put on some tunes. Make sure- make your collar a little blue. Carl begrudgingly pauses his game, pulling out his earbuds and letting them hang over his horns. It was still weird seeing him like this. Around age 14, his horns developed a lot. He complained about headaches and neck strain constantly. He told me he had to see a chiropractor and stayed over because his horns were so big and his neck muscles hadn't developed enough to support them. Even now, a year later, he still sits with a sort of low, hunched position. I'm plenty blue-collared, yeah? I live in Echo. She snarks again. Boy, I have seen the size of your manor. No, you ain't. Never would expect a sort like you to be so plump and yosh- Yachty. Yachty. Yachty blooded. Carl doesn't say anything. His emerald gaze shifts some to the seat in front of him. Karen takes a glug from her soda bottle with her free hand, the other steering us through an on-ramp onto the freeway. The spa day I would have on just one hour of your daddy's income. I'd feel bad for whoever works to Manny Petty that shift. She holds up her calloused right hand. Her, paw, her claws rather stuffed, even for a fox standard. When I'm not driving you, Squirts, I do road crew for public works. Ain't your average mom, eh? She gesticulates with a swirling motion as she speaks, then lets her hand hang limply on the steering wheel. Well, it might be the new average here soon enough. Feminism and all that. You two will learn all about it in college, I'm sure. What are you two going for, major-wise? Both of us make no quick move to respond. Chase? I shift some in my seat, clearing my throat so that my voice doesn't crack. Uh, well, I wanted to go into videography and film, but my parents weren't too fond of that. So, I guess journalism or communications? Ah! Ken responds so abruptly that it makes me wonder if I said something wrong. Hmm. Well, my nephew got one of them communication degrees from North Mountain State. Oh, how'd that go? Ended up being a 60,000 piece of paper that earns him 13.25 an hour fixing old farts like us computers out, out of some big box establishment. Nerd squad, I think they're called. Er, hell if I know. I'm still deciding, I guess. She waves dismissively. I look over at Carl who looks like all he wants to do is go back to his playing his game. What about you, Bighorns? Carl blinks some of the casual speciesism, then scratches the back of his neck. Uh... You just planning on going straight to work for Daddy right after you graduate? Mommy, er, Mom, actually. I, I don't know yet. Carl looks pretty uneasy with this topic. He also seems pretty embarrassed at having said mommy out loud. Were I in better spirits, I'd probably laugh. 
Everyone is good at something, Carl, and hopefully that something is you, something you enjoy too. You always, you're always quiet with your nose and that little device of yours playing games. Maybe that's your future career, something techy. Oh, who just got in? Oh. It was a Seb. Ah, Seb, welcome. Seb. And Matt looks like he's back. Oh, okay. Yes, I just finished my dinner. Awesome. Hey, would you like to take over? Nah. <laughs> You're cool with Morgan being Carl this week? <laughs> yeah. It's like, if I don't have to do anything, that's great. Hi. Admittedly, Leo is usually the one who is the most handy when fixing our tech stuff. Carl is even the best at video games. That tile belongs to Jazz. Carl is quiet for a bit, tugging on the strings of his hoodie. I don't know. Looking out the window, I see the sun is setting as we get to, uh, within ten or so miles of Echo. We pass the Old Man Water Park, which I heard close shortly after the bypass was built and all its passerby traffic was lost. I think for a moment, I see what... I think for a moment I see what looks like some figures in the drain pool, though when I try to squint, I don't see them anymore. You know, I was around when that pit place shut down. I startled some, not realizing I was being watched. Both times, actually. Once in the 60s and again in the 80s when it reopened for a year. Was during the era of big government getting out, big old water project constructions to the state for pennies, LA being the golden child. Our country, as you two squirts are aware, did not become the next Orange County. Spoilers, as my son Keith used to say. She lets an amused grunt before stirring up some. A lot of folks lost their jobs. It was like a little great depression in the middle of Mormon land. Echo has been going to tits for generations now. And not the good sort of this either. The real ugly ones. Like those that hold what what's her name wheels. Mrs. Tethers? Yeah, her. I'm taken off guard at that comment. Mrs. Tethers is a particularly nasty history teacher at PHS who is known for not being very keen on vulpines. Or vulpins. She does have a kind of lopsided pair. Anyway, it is a ripe shame. By the time your kitties are having kitties themselves, this town will be a feast for termites. Well, maybe not the manor. Well, maybe not by the time our kitties are having kitties, maybe seven years. <laughs> I see Karen's silver eyes focus on Carl. The castle, we used to call it. I do have a question regarding that. Sure, what's up? By the time, by the time Arches is a thing, is the manor still there, and does Carl's family still live in Echo? Honestly, I can't answer that, um, because Arches also takes place in another alternate timeline compared to what actually happened in Echo. Like none of the five routes in Echo lead into Arches. Hmm. So. There's some, there's some, uh, there's some kind of weirdness going on with the timeline in general. I have a theory about that, but that's like a 30 minute video worth of theory. Okay. Continue. She says this a bit rather strangely, as if trying to remember something specific. Carl is staring out the window, avoiding Karen's stare. In the two years we've had her as a bus driver, she has never spoken this much. Most of the time, she'd just be scolding Jeremy and Clint. I have this feeling she's been waiting for this opportunity to speak more personally with Carl for a while. As we get closer to Echo, we pass more abandoned places. Some are adorned with faded Art Deco stylings from the bygone modern era, while others are but rotting wood from the Mormon settlement days. In my current situation, all these familiar architectural fadings seem to evoke as a pulsating sense of dread for what is to come. Your family has been here for over a century. The way I see it, least they could do is reinvest in what they capitalized on in the first place. Can you just change the radio station, please? Carl's horns are pressed up against the window, his tone low, but his voice loud. Oh yeah? What do you want it set to? Anything but this. 
Carl looks down at his handheld, fidgeting with some stuff on the, in the character screen, but without the focus to actually keep playing. I'm fine. What do you want to listen to, Chase? All right, and we get to pick. What do we want to listen to? Uh, techno, obviously. Rock. I hear one vote for rock from Seb. I heard one vote for techno from Morgan. Up. Yeah, let's All do right, it, then. baby. Uh, we, okay, we got a vote oh. for everything. Uh, that means uh, oh, Harry and Matt, if you guys both vote on, on random, you can make it random. Otherwise, if one of you votes for one of these things, then we got a tie. Or we, we don't have a tie anymore. Random. Harry, you get the choice then. No. What was that, Harry? Techno. Okay. I don't know. If you have a good... I don't know, if you have a good radio, we might be able to listen to that hard, bassy techno station on 95.5 FM. What did you say? You want this, but louder? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Chase, kill me. All right, I wanted to share with you this beautiful thing. So that was techno. Uh, let's check out soft rock. I don't know. We might be able to get that soft rock station that's sometimes available right before we get into town. What did you say? You want this, but louder? No. 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 <laughs> it's just is that it every time. Is it just country? Is, uh, no, 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 no. I'll show you everything. Okay. Pop. I don't know. Nothing gets me jacked like some generic pop music. 98.1 FM should have that. Which, this is the thing that I love about this. So, Chase is a fucking nerd, and I adore him for it. He knows the station numbers. He, he knew, like, two of them off the top of his head. He also has been using big words. If you've noticed, he's, like, 14, and he's choosing as big of words as he can. Maybe 15 at best for his age, but still. It's just one of those things that I like look at and I'm like, God damn it, Chase. <laughs> Very Protestant for this. But yeah. It just gets louder. We can also choose random. Okay, random. What Carl said. Anything but this. What did you say? You want this but louder? No. No. <laughs> And then last but not least, country, if we really want to screw with Carl. I've... Fuck. I hate country. Country's not uh, a bad country. genre. Okay. I adore country in its own right. Okay, I will say this though. Country, I'm talking about like real country, like where it's not just about like, oh, I'm talking about getting drunk or hunting or cheating on my ex or whatever. It's my truck. Yeah. I'm a single uh, woman uh, who's either working really hard or I murdered my husband. Yeah, like that that's that new country. country. That <laughs> new country, I understand people's like upsetment with that. But like old country is actually really interesting if you listen to that. I, I really, really can't hate on Johnny Cash. Dolly yeah, Johnny Parker, Cash is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Johnny Cash or Dolly Parton, I just sit there like mm, Oh Dolly yes. Parton's a freaking treasure. Yeah, Dolly Parton as well. The current station is fine. Don't worry about it. What'd you say? You want this, but louder? <laughs> no! No. No. Oh, God. Thanks, kill me. Stop. End my life. Maybe I'll respawn somewhere peaceful. So this game is... This is like seven years before the official game? Uh, yeah, so... Uh, Echo takes place in 2015. This takes place on November 1st of, tw of 2008. So, remember, okay. everything here is just so 2000 and late. Okay. Thanks. Oh, wow. God, I forgot that existed. Why? <laughs> <laughs> this is good for you, Carl. You're getting blue-collared, albeit, you know, the hard way. If I want to get blue collared the hard way, I'd borrow Jasmine's jean short shorts and stand around, stand assumingly around the motel. Covering our ears and pressing our heads to the seats in front of us, we endure the hick musical cavalcade, as Jasmine deemed the station. Glancing oh, sidelong out the bus window, I see that we're less than a mile from home. My paw pads start to feel clammy and I clutch my knees tight. 
It's fortunate that Carl is currently occupied with burying his muzzle into the faux leather of the seat in front of him as I begin to tremble. Part of me actually wants to see him to see. I know it's just stalling for the inevitable, but I want to talk to someone, anyone, about all of this. This is a small town, and whoever I speak to will know that I like guys, and I'll have to deal with them knowing that fact every day till college. If I go to college. I used to hate being so damn generic. Fucking Flynn whines about how boring I am all the time, but now... All I can see are my folks looking at me, seeing me as that otter who likes it up the rear and not as generic Chase. God, that's my parents will see me as, too. This sort of deviant who lives in their home. I imagine them looking at foes of me around the house now and wishing they could have had that back. I never really talked to my parents about relationships and sex stuff, and now I'm just shocking them with this whole new side of me. What an anniversary gift I've given them. I look over and see Carl hunched over, his horns pushing into the seat his gaze focused blankly upon the screen of his handheld. Upon closer inspection, the screen is completely black, the device no longer on. It seems that he's not in the best of states either. I swallow, debating disturbing him. Carl might be my best friend, but we don't really have deep talks, especially since the lake incident. Maybe I could text someone? I slide my phone out of my pocket, staring at the black screen much like Carl is now. I realize when I get home, my parents are probably going to demand to see my phone and messages, so I'll have to remember to delete them. I try to imagine how each of one of my friends would react, but this is honestly foreign ground, only alluded to in traded insults and jokes. Flynn especially. The lizard drops the word, uh, F-word, I'm not going to say that, <laughs> in every other sentence as of late, though I think he just chooses it for maximum edginess. Jasmine, on the other hand, might be the most supportive with this sort of thing. However, she wasn't at school today. I eavesdropped Flynn mentioning something about issues with her parents and Jeremy DeLeo, but I couldn't make out the specifics. I don't even know how Leo would react to any of this. He makes jokes about poofy stuff all the time, but I can tell there's some unease there. That leaves TJ. Carl described him once as the, mori or as the moral gooey center of our sandwich of a group of friends. And that being said, I'm not sure how much I can actually tell him. He's just crossing the, pres the puberty threshold right now. Plus the Christianity factor. I uncover one of my ears long enough to pull out my phone. My heart's skipping a beat at the new voicemail notification. I quickly swipe over to my contacts. Alright, so we can choose which friend do we confide in. Oh god. So this is how you determine the route in uh, Route 65. Mm -hmm. I will say the routes are mostly the same, except there's a special scene for each person for when you confide in them. And then there's a scene towards, there's a couple scenes towards the end that are different as well. Okay. Gotcha. Is it Carl or TJ? I guess oh, Carl, he's, since he's already here. TJ is uh. literally just a child. TJ's 13. Like, I am. Oh I'm my god, we're not, we're not confiding in a 13 on our first attempt. I'm sorry, but no. <laughs> uh, technically, the thing is, all these options were equally likely for Chase, so... Yeah, Leo's, so gonna, Leo's gonna be weird about this, and... Like, Leo and Flynn will use this to hold power over us. And I'm not about that life. So, so I want to share with you guys something, something that I found out that was very interesting. Each mm -hmm. one of these choices... Mm -hmm all happened. You want to know why? Why? For each of the routes, whichever choice you picked here, this version of Route 65 then acts as the prequel to that route. Oh. And confide in TJ, that's the prequel to TJ's route. Confide in Jasmine, that's the prequel to Jenna's route. Confide with Carl, Carl's route. Flynn, Flynn's route. Gotcha. Oh, so every time like when they're talking about when they were younger, they're talking about events that happened to this route either this route or before then so th there's only like this uh one night that you can play and interact with and then there's uh the space between 2008 and 2015 that somewhat changes depending on which route you are in so like uh Both. jenna's route actually has a really big uh hint about this where uh chase mentions that he watched anime with uh jenna quite a bit while he was in high school but 
in Carl's route, he doesn't bring that up at all, having instead said that he wasn't really that interested in anime, despite Jenna really being into it. I never really took Jenna as being the one who'd be very interested in anime. That always seemed like a, a Carl kind of thing. Carl's interested in comic books and superheroes. Yeah, but they kind of go hand in hand. I mean, My not Hero completely. Academia exists. Not, yeah. It's, it's not, yeah. Yeah, because the thing is, My Hero Academia is different from Superman or Spider-Man or uh, Hulk or anything like that. Like, oh, so Western different. superheroes are very different because like, with, with My Hero Academia, that's kind of like the East take on or not East, that's uh, that's that one author from Japan's take on how superheroes could work within a within that co cultural context. It's just one of those interesting things about just how media gets made and all. Either way. Mm -hmm. uh, so we should probably do Leo or Carl since we've done their routes already. Right? Uh, we can do any of them. Also, I just realized that my freaking email is still open, so I'm going to quickly close that. Carl's not a bad idea. Yeah. I figure since he's already here, you know. Yeah. Learning that Carl lives with constant pain endears me to him. <laughs> All right, so I'm hearing mostly uh, a yes for Carl. Or. All right. Coral. 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 I guess I'll just have to wait for the right opportunity. Right now, not being it, I'm about to slide my phone into my pocket when I feel it vibrate against the pads of my palm. You gotta be like, hey, Carl, you like anime, right? Speaking of which, I got Gorgonzola at the mini market in Peyton. Well, that's informative. I honestly have no idea what that me what this message means. Instinctively, I try to respond with something jabby. I'm sorry, Flynn. I'm sure they have a cream for that. I don't usually ever text Flynn, mainly because he doesn't text back. So this is weird, I guess. It's a type of salad, you musky fuck. <laughs> oh. I thought it was a cheese. <laughs> yeah, that's my uh, thought. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we get the Gorgonzola salad. This is, this is the greatest sort of conversation I've heard in a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh, you yeah, know, Route 65 is great. <laughs> so, like, like, I can imagine change, this. Or are, they like... doing, are they doing like a, um, a Riverdale where it's... 30-year-olds okay. playing 16-year-olds. So, what's interesting about this is they actually used, uh, for some of the characters, they used the old model from back, like, in the earliest builds of Echo. So they took those original models from, like, early builds of Echo and said, yeah, these are totally the teen versions of the characters now. Great. <laughs> so they have one for Carl, they have one for Leo, and uh, that was it. Those are the only two that I can think of that they had a teen model for. Uh, you Jenna, don't get older, they, you just get better rendered. Well, Sorry, Jen, go on. Jenna has uh, has the same model as she does now. And TJ, they figured out some way to uh, change that for him. Because, you know, TJ would be 13. So his old model where he's an adult in his like early, late teens, early 20s does not work for a 13-year-old. So they figured out a workaround for him. And then Flynn never shows up in person. This is the closest we'll get to see Flynn in this. Really? Mm-hmm. That is odd to me. Well, remember, at this time, Flynn is actually like 18 or 19. He's out of high school. Oh, okay. So it, it's a, it would be a little weird for him to be hanging out with uh, high schoolers, and in TJ's case, a uh, junior high kid. I still find it hilarious that he's like, what? No, it's a salad. <laughs> what are you <laughs> talking about? Whatever. Why are you texting me about salad? I look out the bus window, I can see that we're approaching Carl's stop. As the bus turns onto the neighborhood road, I scoot over some, speaking up to get Carl's attention. So, I'm gonna get off with you here, okay? Carl continues staring at his blank screen for a second before blinking and looking back at me. Oh, DJ and Hannah. Hi, DJ. Hello. Hi, Hannah. Hi. Hannah's around the corner. Okay. We started up on this because uh, Harry needs to leave at 8.30, so... Oh no, Harry! Wait, what? You know, 
That's too early. You're not supposed to leave that early. Because we always get here about that time. Well, that's why we yeah. start early. <laughs> are you are you sure? That might be pretty messy, and Karen washing might give me performance anxiety. Carl stares deadpan at me. I rest my forehead in my paw and groan, though I end up snickering a bit. The bus comes to a stop. Carl, this is where you get off. Ace wants to get off, too. The bus. <laughs> you got help you folks? Shit. I look back to Carl, and he gives me a look of understanding. He unslings his backpack from his shoulder, rifling through it. Carl looks up at me briefly, mouthing one word. Stall. So how do we want to stall with uh, Karen here? Uh, ask about Keith. Keith. Who the fuck is Keith? Uh, that's Does it matter? Oh. I do. I make a motion of holding something up behind the seat. Carl, seeming to have found a pen and notepad, is scribbling hastily. So, uh, Karen, you mentioned your son, Keith? The name sounds familiar. Karen gives me a rather dubious look, her silver gaze eyeing me up. So, uh, should Karen be played by Sam for the rest of this, or should it be done by, uh, Hannah? What do, what do you guys prefer? I'm entirely indifferent. Doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter to me either. I'm gonna let Sam and Hannah could go, and, like, play this one out as in a yeah, I don't gladi care. gladiatorial combat. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, wait. There yeah, can only be one. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, do you want to be Karen, or are you okay with Sam okay. being? Okay. Like, I, I can be Karen, but if she wants, if she wants to do it, I'm also fine with that. I'm good in, not doing it. <laughs> in general. Type out rock, paper, or scissors, and whoever gets the one wins. Do it. <laughs> nah, I think Hannah should be Karen. Hannah's a good Karen. <laughs> I, I'm not sure how I feel about that statement. <laughs> <laughs> Coming for your own spouse, that's a rough one to hear. I said she, was, I, she, she can play this character well. What, what were you guys... What were you talking about? Very funny, very funny, <laughs> DJ. <laughs> he, he does this to me all the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't understand. Not specifically with Karen, but like other jokes. Uh huh. I don't understand what's funny about this. Alright. Yeah. So. Yeah, I can figure. So is it gonna be Hannah then? It's gonna be Hannah. <laughs> okay. Well. I doubt you have recently. Pete's been gone for a good year or so now. Where'd he go? Karen scratches at the end of her muzzle, still eyeing me with the same searching expression. He's dead. Dead to me, at least. Oh, sorry. Definitely not gonna prod there. Carl currently looks as if he's trying to camouflage into his seat, slowly sliding in down it. Right. The old fox lets out a huff that is half exasperated, half amused. She waves dismissively. You swear it's gonna exit the bus or not? Mm -hmm. I got a big bowl of cinnamon chips and pineapple mango salsa waiting for me back home. I shift awkwardly in my seat. Out of the corner of my eye, something yellow flutters down by my feet. With haste, I bend down and snatch up the note. Acting as nonchalant as possible, Carl's penmanship is actually pretty good. I give him a discreet, grateful look as he gets up and moves to the exit. I'm coming. Carl stops, looking back at me with that same deadpan as before. To the front of the bus. Mm-hmm. I think I hear Carl mutter, that's quite some range, as he turns and continues offward. Carl hops off we first. Ah, uh, okay. His hooves making an audible clop noise upon the aged asphalt. However, I follow and move to hand my note to Karen. As I follow and move, hand, move to hand my note to Karen, her calloused hand grasps my wrist instead of the note. You made his bed, Sorry. Uh, I'm not that damn dumb, kitty. 
I don't think they this out a long while. She relinquishes my wrist, the note fluttering to the ground. I can feel Carl staring nervously at us from the road. I appreciate that. Our dog. Ah, uh, your dog really wants your attention? No, well, he, he had the- He made a sound somewhere else, so I went to go check on him. I got up, and the moment I got up, he went and hopped on this nice spot of the couch. Ah. On the love seat, so. <laughs> Bastard, Randall. I appreciate your curiosity. Keith and I live down in Coldville, so doubt you'd know him. He made some seriously questionable decisions regarding his amorous pursuits. Things I could not abide by. She shifts, she shifts some in her large driver's seat, the cadence of her voice changing some as she looks at the back of the bus. I'm way back there, puppy-eyed and trembling. Oh no. You afraid of something at home? I know how the people can be out here. I'm frozen, feeling the tips of my ears burn rosy at today's endless cavalcade of embarrassment. She pauses, bending down to pick up the dropped note, and before tossing it into the bent bus's trash bucket. Play with kids. I'm not sure what she means by that, and definitely I'm not about to say. And definitely not sure what to say. I look back at Carl. He seems to be averting his gaze now, his paws deep in his hoodie pockets. Alright, alright, I get it. Nobody trusts the hick bus driver to know what it's like to be a kid these days. Look, run along now. Sorry for, you know, grabbing ya. I'm used to them kids, Jeremy and Clinton, doing that and getting me in trouble. I try hard and force a smile. Oh, uh, thanks. I appreciate your concern and all. Er, yeah, they are pretty shitty. Language, kiddo. <laughs> Sorry. Also, tell Carl flies down. He looks like a damn fool. I see Carl stiffen, quickly reaching down and fumbling with his zipper. His <laughs> neon orange Superwolf boxer is visible through his fly. Karen just sighs. I feel my phone I feel my phone vibrate within my pocket. See you squirts on Monday. And like I said, here is the old ball for Carl. Oh my god. He's like way less fat, but also looks really derpy. Well, I mean, that works for him being a teenager. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I step off the bus besides Carl and the door shuts behind me. Karen heading back toward the freeway. It gets dark Dude, so much... Aaron seems... What? Aaron seems like a good egg. Uh, so the thing is, Karen's a mixed bag. Because if you noticed, she said she kicked her son out and he's dead to her because of his amorous pursuits. This being 2008... Uh... She essentially said she kicked her son out because he was gay. Oh. I thought I thought it was her husband. I thought she was kicking out her Keith husband. Keith was her son. Like sleeping around. No. Uh, Keith is her son. And, yeah, uh, but at least it, at least she's willing to um, you know, care for children. So there is that. Yeah, like I said, she's a mixed bag. She, that that's what I like about some characters like they're they're not pure evil and they're not pure good. They're like real people, like yeah, a shitty person who would kick out their kid for uh, being in the LGBT community in some capacity. They're not always pure evil, and that's what makes it so shitty as well. Because you know that they could be better about that, and they could be a better person, and not do something like that. Either way, that's neither here nor there. This is supposed to be just a quick game about. Some gay otter having his first time realizing that he's gotta tell his friends that he's gay. So let's get back to that. I don't want to stare at this picture anymore. Can we move on? No, you have to stare at it forever. Always see Carl. It gets dark so much earlier now that summer is over. Echo isn't exactly a major challenge ship. The area is deemed a census designated place, so we don't get street lights. Carl watches the bus fade off into the distance before pulling out his phone. All right, who's messing around with something? Not me. Not me. Mm-mm. I think it was Samuel. Ah, uh, okay. 
And if you're gonna mess around with something nearby your mic, just make sure you mute, okay? He's already muted. He's been Sorry. muted. Ah. I, can I just can I just say that hmm? Teen Carl looks like more of a stoner than his adult self? Like I said, this was still always meant to be the Carl in like the twenty in the uh, twenty fifteen iteration, but they're like, okay, we're just gonna use this old model just to make things easier for making Route sixty five. Okay. Literally only one character gets new character assets for uh, this game. Gotcha. Uh, Can't wait till I get my own car and license. <laughs> huh. He starts texting. Letting my parents know that you're coming over. We should troll around on that 3D virtue chat game again tonight. I spent some money, got myself this big luchador avatar, except I gave him big old breasts. Called him Maya Maria. He looks up at me with a smirk before turning and walking. How much did you spend? I follow, pulling out my phone. Sexing my aunt, Miss Sent to you. Oh. I don't know. I was just grabbing what I needed. Fifteen bucks, maybe? That's a lot for one of those kinds of games. Especially just for clothing. Well, like, the luchador mask I wanted is one of the premium items, so it cost the most. Everything else was dirt cheap. So what's up, Flynn? I'm at the bus stop on Elizabeth Street. Every single girl in that game uses the same hair. The long, curly, blonde one that costs like a dollar. I think Jazz is in a shit place right now. She doesn't miss school every... Uh, she doesn't miss school ever, and Jeremy's saying weird shit about her at lunch. At least they say they're girls. <clears throat> I'm just trying to be unique. Otherwise, what's the point? It's social RP our role-playing game. Why risk getting ignored? I'm trying to keep away from home right now. I might stop by and check up on her. I uh, actually have another account with a character that's more normal looking. I made I him after you left last time. I was going to go... Uh, go I was going to after work. Or tip... Tit dirt parents have been off. Yeah, wow. you don't have to say certain words if you don't want to. No, I just cannot read as well. Oh no, no, don't worry. Two thousand eight. We used a lot of fucked up words that do not oh, yeah. age well. So, <laughs> I fully uh, recognize that. You can swap. You can just squeak words dirt. if you want. Her tit dirt parents have been off. Uh, awful as of late. You can if you want. I but doubt your pansy self can handle her. Handle Jerry if he's there. He's like this big primate looking dude with burn scars everywhere. That's kind of albin albino-y face. I don't care if him and Clint are there. I think for like in the future, we'll have what Carl is saying go first before whoever's on the phone. Mm -hmm. I had this idea for the character sort of based off a dream I had once. Look. Don't know if I'm supposed to tell you this, but Leo's going to his par party thing tonight. Should go too, or not, but I don't care. Anyway, I went to a lot of the in-game hotspots first. A lot of the stuff you and I saw when we were messing around. A party? Not an echo, right? What's it for? The election? <laughs> it's sort of like you said, The that most people... There are just middle-aged housewives who can barely tap a sentence. It's for Day of Dead. That's the tape. A bunch of uh, jocks and townie types are going to be there. Route 65 at Parsons Manufacturing. But then I sort of went off-grid, I guess you'd call it. By the way, I want to point out, you guys remember the primate-looking albino-y thing that Carl made? Yeah. Yeah. He made a human. <laughs> oh, Carl made a human uh, soda. Wow. 
Excellent. Because uh, it's a primate looking uh, by no evil. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, I have to step away for a second. Okay. Matt, do you want to step up for Carl then for the moment? Sure. Why not? I like the spots that aren't advertised on this nation finder. I started finding a lot of weird shit. Like, weirder than the shit we were making ironically, yeah? Leo didn't mention it when I saw him. You going? There were these places which looked like more real-life houses. Not the usual fantasy exotic stuff. Just people living in virtual families in these boring-ass looking homes. Complete with framed photos and screenshots of their characters. I got the impression that a lot of them were, like, foreign? Just said I'll be working, and when I get off, I'm heading into Jasmine's. Fucking deduce... Fucking deduce, school paper boy. I walked into this one flat that these two horse ladies in it. Poor... Poor Carl, man. Yeah, man. Carl's... Carl's man. been sharing his soul this entire time, and Chase is like, I'm texting. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been around the block. Ah, uh, high school. <laughs> They had decorations with the Middle Eastern woods everywhere. They they seemed normal enough. They had a TV item which just displayed a slideshow of Photoshop photos of them with a baby. I was just curious. Fuck you. When I started exploring the house, I ended up walking into this nursery room and they got really pissy. <laughs> I thought about trolling, you know, and writing, I eat the baby, and hopping up and down on the crib, but I don't know. I just felt like this weird mix of awkward and sad. Jace? <laughs> Hello? He just pops out from the side of the phone. Just from the side of the throat, from the side of the phone, Carl is like, I can smell you. <laughs> Huh? Are, are you, you listening? <laughs> Carl is standing in front of me with a concerned expression on his face. It takes me a moment to respond. Yeah, just texting Flynn. He's actually responding to you? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I look up at the street. Carl's house sitting in its amber glowing glory atop the hill slope. Apparently there's a party happening tonight. Carl raises an inquisitive brow. Like, here? Or in general? I'm not sure what you mean by in general, but yeah, around here. It's for the Day of the Dead. Leo and I think maybe Flynn got invited. What? They didn't mention it to me at all. I asked them to their faces if they had any plans. I shrugged. Oh, dick. Flynn made it sound like it was mainly just Peyton people coming out here. Yeah, but... It is weird they wouldn't mention that. That sounds about like the most exciting thing that will happen around here for months. Carl looks off to the side, shifting his posture some. I'd rather just... stay home and play Virtue with you anyway. Seriously, what the fuck? The idea of two of our closest friends were keep the idea that two of our closest friends were keeping this a secret did make me feel pretty shitty. On top of all the other sensations of general shittiness I feel right now. It's a Parsons manufacturing building, you know, off Route 65. That's sort of in the ass of end of nowhere for a party. Maybe it's like a rave or something. I shrug again. I think we should go. <laughs> Fucking anime eye, Carl. <laughs> oh my god, that is terrifying. Whack. <laughs> Look at his face. Oh my god. T two open eyes. Carl blinks, his expression akin to as if I just asked to rub his horns. Dude. He lets out a little huff, rubbing the back of his head. 
First of all, we weren't invited. Second, to the middle of nowhere. Third, isn't Day of the Dead for, like... He pulls his paw away from his beanie long enough to swirl around gesticulation as he tries to phrase this right. Landfolk? Uh, my, my blood's as apple pie as it gets, dude. Alright, first, Leo is in there. So, I don't see him not getting us in. <clears throat> Though it was weird he didn't invite us in the first place. Second, we live in the middle of nowhere. Anything local happening is technically in the middle of nowhere. Which still doesn't make it any more safe. Third, well, I don't know. I assume nothing too culturally sensitive is taking place in an abandoned factory. <coughs> Which won't save us from sticking out like a sore thumb. Carl exhales through nip flared nostrils, lolling his head up as if being throttled by how much of a bad idea this is. There we go. Dude. He looks back down at me, a taut frown upon his muzzle. I don't know. I guess I'm kind of curious. Worst case, we stop in, smack Leo, and then make Flynn's fetish and scat. Best case, we stop in, smack Leo, and they have food. I'd rip your tail off for a cheese kissy deer right now. Don't do that. My phone buzzes in my grip. You're welcome. I gotta go. Try not to suck too much cock out there on your way. Uh -huh. Ugh, so it begins. That's good advice from Flynn. I don't know if you're gonna hold out the whole way, though. Uh -huh. Glanc glancing over with a start, I realize that Carl is leering over my shoulder, squinting at my phone. Christ! I exhale, turning my phone screen off. Yeah, I'll try my best. Carl lets out a brief, breathy bit of laughter before pulling out his phone. Lying to your parents' time? Yep, your fault too. What should I say? So here's the best part. All these work, but my favorite is honestly tell the truth. Because think about it, Carl is a reclusive, kind of nerdy kid in high school already. <laughs> so if he tells his parents, yeah, I'm going to get, I'm gonna get out of town and go to a fucking factory on the outskirts, we get to see whether his parents are actually serious about caring about the kid or not. <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> or, or better yet, whether or not they actually believe him. Mm-hmm. That too. They'll be like, ha ha, yeah, yeah. There's you're probably no just way. going over to That you're working on an art project. Yeah, I'll let you know, those first three are not that as interesting as Tell the Truth, in my opinion. Let's just tell the truth, mm. then. Sure, then let's do Tell the Truth. <laughs> I, I really don't believe his parents are going to believe him. <laughs> you know what? I'll be 16 in, like, a, a year, and it is a Friday. My folks keep saying I need to be, uh, social. So... So, yeah, here's the confirmation. If Carl's gonna be 16 in a year, that means next year, in at the end of April, because we know his birthday's at the end of April, he'll turn 16 then. Meaning, in, 20, in 2008, on November 1st, he was 15, meaning he was born in 1993. And for some reason, he's in a grade below me, which really still... Freaks, makes me wonder what the hell happened with that math. Because literally, I'm only like a month and a half older than Carl. Uh, unless for some reason he got held back for some weird thing. Yeah, but everyone know. would have been held back then. It's like one of those things where it's like the math just doesn't add up. Either like this world starts school a year late for people or something. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think depending on school district, I think some places will be like, yeah, starting if you're like five in September, then you can go into kindergarten or whatever. Uh, I, I, I don't know whether that's the case for this one. Is this in America? Yeah, this is America. This is, okay. This is actually in, like, a the state is supposed to be a combination between Arizona and, uh, um... I assumed it was, like, New Mexico. God. It's not New Mexico. It was, like, it, or maybe, no, it's not New Mexico. It's Arizona and... 
Uh, oh God, I want to say Utah. It's wherever the Salt Lake City is. Yeah, Utah. That's Utah. Okay, so then, yeah, it's Arizona and Utah. It's a mix between the two. Okay. Before we go, though, I want to check up on Jazz. I see Carl give me a bit of an inquisitive look, as if he's not sure whether to protest this decision or not. It's on the way, sort of, and she wasn't at school today. Flint told me that her parents have been worse as of late. Didn't know they could get much worse, Yeah. Didn't know they could get much worse, dude. I know I may as well be the prep here, but they're like the destiny, the definition of trailer trash. He pauses, then quickly adds. Not jazz, though. I nod some to the affirmative. Then begin, begin, heading offward. <laughs> it's nice to find typos every so often. <laughs> I can see Carl Where? looking... What? Where is Jenna in all this? Jazz ja Jasmine's... Uh, so Jenna is Jasmine's uh, birth name. She changed it to Jenna after she got the fuck away from her family. Oh, and another thing that's fascinating is, like, didn't Carl berate Jenna for not seeing her family? In uh, Echo? Yeah, but like, I'll I'm... also point out that was Carl, like, no, no, it's it's Flynn who really berated her. Yeah, so I'm saying, like, F Flynn, the one who's telling people, hey, go check up on her because they're being yeah. particularly bad tonight, is also the Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna question it. Flynn's that special kind of dumb. It's fine. Flynn kind of is, though. It, no, he no, Flynn was not. In... Flynn was not being dumb. He was trying to hurt her. He was trying to hurt everyone in that scene. Because I'm talking about the river. That's what you're talking about, right? The scene at the river where he like blows yes, up on I everyone. Am talking about so that. yeah, he says that because he's trying to hurt her and say, "Oh yeah, you're not even checking in with your family anymore either." Oh, look at Jenna being empathetic and caring about her friends, but not giving two cents, uh, two shits about her family. He was deliberately trying to hurt her with that, even He's though that everyone. He's well, kind of an asshole. Well, yeah, he is an asshole. But the thing is, everyone like immediately pointed out, like, yeah, he was reaching there for Jenna because everyone knows Jenna's family sucks. So there was no reason for her to reach out to her family. The thing that the vibe that I am getting from Flynn. Eh? is that he does care about his friends and he is in a position where he does know a lot about the things that are not going well in their lives. Mm -hmm. I think the vibe that I get is that he is a person who is very observant of trauma and other people probably can see somebody who's experienced a lot of tra trauma, but he is very combative probably as a result of his trauma. So he's always in that combative, he's always ready to fight to survive his trauma. And because of that, he's not really able to be soft and supportive, though he wants to be. And then that ends up with him, when he tries to be as supportive, it ends up with him being aggressive because he doesn't really know how to get out of that combat mode. And then also, then pass and switch over into that just out of, straight out attacking each other, attacking people. And because he's so good at finding, so good at observing people's traumas and interpreting them, intuiting them, okay. he can then really hurt people. Yeah, I also am taking a look at the clock. We, we got, I'm sorry, Sam, I don't mean to cut you off, but we have like nine minutes left before Harry has to go, so. Oh, that's all. Okay. Uh, I can see Carl looking a bit longingly towards his bedroom window, the aqua glow of his computer monitor visible from within. I have to admit that I am kind of longing for the same time on my laptop, though as I remember my situation from the morning, my heart sinks. My laptop's probably been taken from me, and my parents probably are going to go through all my files in internet history. My fists clench an inward cringe. I just need to not think about it right now. Crossing over to Jasmine's that neighborhood, the surface of the road shifts from asphalt to dirt. While Stecco's pavement is laden with alligator cracks and crumbling edges, the dirt road looks even worse. Each step we take kicks up a plume of dust and sediment covering the road's top loose and sand-like. The clopping of Carl's hooves have been muffled, though, making everything seem sort of tranquil. Which is odd, because hanging out with Carl is usually not something I consider a tranquil experience. 
maybe the better term for it is eerie. I can see the faded memory, the faded masonry of the abandoned school behind. Oh God, this sentence is tough for me. I can see the faded masonry of the abandoned school behind, building up ahead at the bend. The grass around it pale and dormant in the November chill. God. Chase, all of your fucking big words. Shut up, Chase. There aren't too many other buildings around beside it, though a few junked cars, cinder blocks, and steel barrels can be seen beside the road. Flynn calls this part of Echo Tetanus Alley. Dude. I usually don't, you know, brave coming around here in, in the daytime. This is kind of... He gestures about with a limp flail instead of finishing his sentence. This is clearly out of his comfort zone, though I honestly think anything outside of Carl's bedroom could be considered as such. <laughs> you never walked to Jasmine's house at night? Never without, like, Leo or something. I nod. I get it. If someone comes running at me with a syringe, I'm using you as a meat shield. You smoke meth. You don't usually inject it. If somebody comes running at me with a meth pipe, I'm using you as a meat shield. Now that I have to be his grunt, keeping wary of my surroundings. There's no wind, so the mesquite and sagebrush are static still. We walk quietly for a bit, but as I reach the schoolhouse, Carl re breaches the silence. People around here hate me, dude. I turn to look at him, the Rand's face devoid of expression, his gaze distant. Well, Jeremy and Claire are just vocal about it. The rest just hate everybody, I think. No, like, you heard what Karen was saying, right? How she sounded like there was some collective simmering spite under the surface? Well, that's just... Don't say... That's just Karen. Because I hear it in other places too, dude. You're a spoiled, fat, rich kid. That's an easy target. My parents sell fucking ice cream. How can you hate the ice cream family? Uh, when they're rich, you can't. This is a good point. How can you hate the ice cream oh, family? Oh, 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 oh. I, I have an IRL on this. Of a rich ice cream family I'm not a fan of. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Since we have only five minutes left, how about we save that for uh, in the, when Harry has to go? Yeah, I so, will. Sorry, DJ. The ram waves his arms about before letting them flop ragdoll-like doll- oh, ragdoll-like at his sides. I pause, hesitating on my response for a moment. Then it comes to me. Maybe they're just intolerant. I wait a beat. Lactose intolerant. <laughs> Carl rolls his head back and lets out a surprisingly loud groan. Blinking, I hold up a finger to my muzzle. Shh! You're being noisy! I see the ram visibly recoil, increasingly self-aware. He sinks back into himself, dipping his paws into his pockets. Carl is really different when he talks to me in comparison to how he's how, when he's at school around others. He's all quiet and such at lunch, or in between classes, but if it's just us hanging out, you can be kind of a spaz. It's because of your ancestors, right? The town founder and whatnot? Yeah. He answers abruptly, looking sidelong. I think my scolding may have upset him. You know, it's a wonder that it... It's a wonder that is such a thing around here. Sadami and mass murder has a way of sticking around. It's pronounced sodomy, but you don't have to repeat it. Good. Which one's worse, right? I say that with a bit more of a play forced, playful tone than I intended. Carl looks over at me, then shrugs. Depends on who you ask. I look back at the abandoned school. Something about it always gave me a weird feeling. Carl and I haven't been inside since fourth grade, now that I think about it. We arrive outside Jasmine's house. The square stucco structure dwarfed by the three-story school. No, wait, the three-story school next door. I can hear some scraping noises coming from inside. 
like wooden dining chairs pushed across tile floor. As I walk toward the door, I see Carl stop out of the corner of my eye. Looking back, I see he's frozen in place, his green eyes flicking from the entr entryway to me. You know, they don't like me, dude. Can you handle this? I sigh, deciding it isn't worth arguing over. He's kind of right, too, I guess. You going home? Carl? Am I still connected? Yeah, you're yeah, still connected. I can still hear you. Okay, what happened to Matt? I don't know. Just maybe what happened to me just a few minutes ago. My computer just would not do anything. I couldn't hear you guys. I couldn't oh. click on anything. Nothing was moving, so I had to restart my computer. <laughs> huh. You gonna go home? Yes, says Carl. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Carl leaves. Morgan, you wanna tag in for Carl while we uh, have like yeah. two minutes? Alright. Yeah. Nah, I'm just gonna chill out here. He leans back a bit, teetering on the edge of the road and a little bit of gravel in front of the house. You look real inconspicuous, man. Thanks. Do you know what inconspicuous means? Well endowed. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> I, throw up, I, I throw up my hands and make my way to the door, knocking three times. Carl, meanwhile, ambles off in the direction of the old school, out of sight. The skidding inside stops. Within a couple Ooh. seconds, the door flings open, outward, so I'm nearly knocked on my ass. I'm instantly greeted by the smell of stale beer and the sound of football with the volume up too high. The sight of errant plastic bags and food containers scatter about tangerine shag carpet just completes the mood, really. A stout fat finnick fox stands before me, his eyes wide. He stares, though to me without meeting my gaze, as if he's looking right through me. Overall, Jasmine's dad looks like hell. He blinks some and refocuses somewhat narrowing his eyes at me and dusting off his shirt. Chase, he mumbles. Hey, yeah, is Jazz home? Inside, I see a head peek out from around the corner, the fur too splotchy to be Jasmine's. Jeremy. Fuck off, Chase. His voice is laden with derisive contempt. Jasmine's dad doesn't even react. It's bizarre how Jeremy never seems to get disciplined. She's in her room, got chores she ain't done yet, so she can't go out and, you know, play. He steps out of the way and moves back to the kitchen, where a plate of convenience store nachos and cheese sits. He reaches down to grab a chip, but ends up just sticking his paw in the hot melted of cheese. The old fox looks more confused than anything, his brow furrowed. Three seconds pass before he actually grabs a chip. Meanwhile, Jeremy is still hard-eyeing me over the couch cushion, I realize now that he's only in his underwear. Tidy whiteies too. With that, I fast walk my way to the end of the hall, stepping over some nasty-looking stains. I'm guessing Jasmine's mom is in the bathroom, so I give that a wide berth as well. I'm about to turn and knock on Jazz's door. As I'm about to turn and knock on Jazz's door, I realize that it's completely open, the door taken off the hinges and resting against the wall nearby. Awkwardly, I knock on the wooden frame and clear my throat. Jazz? Peace. She states my name with a matter-of-fact tone. I take that as my all good to enter and step inside. All right, and we'll call it there. Ah, uh, no. Why do you do this to me, Alan? Why do you make me care about this game? Congratulations, Harry. You uh, have a new addiction. <laughs> it wrecked, dude. <sighs> Angering how much I'm like, why do I have to find out what happens next? Like I said, we'll we'll save this for when you can join us again. Sebastian, you played Animal Crossing, right? I played a fair amount, yes. Do you have to build the bridges to get over the river? Um, in the you get a pole. Version? You get in a New pole. Horizon. Yeah, you yeah. get a pole. You can you, build uh, bridges later, though. You need to build hmm. bridges or uh, build a pole. Well, now I have to actually leave and get ready to go to work. 
Oh, yeah. Um, well, say goodbye, everyone, then. Goodbye. Bye. Fuck my internet. <laughs>